<clears throat> Morning, guys. It's about 10 to 5 a.m. on a Sunday. <laughs> I slept really good. We had a torrential monsoon downpour last night. It was freaking awesome. Anyhow, got some stuff I want to show you guys. Let's uh, let's start off the morning with a little unboxing. All right, give you guys a little hint here. See the switch? A little high low action, heavy duty. Let you guess what's inside the box there. It's got a pack and slip on it. Pull that off and hang on to it. In case this isn't what I ordered. It says uh, what it is and what it should be, so. Hi, Aura. Looks like it's pretty well packaged. I got this off Amazon um, for 166 bucks, which was about a third of what it would normally cost. Oh look, they sent a <laughs> they sent a bag of candy. That's pretty unique. That's some pretty nice packing bubbles. I'll hang on to those for some of the stuff that goes on eBay. Some paperwork information here. We'll get rid of that. This is the heart of the operation right here. You guys see that? Red dot. Usually anything that's got red dots on it is going to be something good. They provide the military with all of their climate control systems, which would lead us to the next thing. Well, this is all it came with, which is kind of expected. shot of that for you guys so it is a 24 volt high low 30,000 BTU heater now the Maradine unit that we have in the shelter works great it's absolutely fantastic However, it's only 15,000 BTU, and we've noticed that the Eberspotcher has a high-low mode, and with the fan on the Meridine in the highest setting, the Eberspotcher can totally keep up. It'll go into low mode after it reaches a coolant operating temperature, and it'll just hover there. Like the uh, Maradine isn't even on. And the Maradine puts out some heat. Oh, hi, Aura. The Maradine puts out some heat, but um, we would like to be able to control that more. So, I'm thinking that um, since the Maradine is only 14,000 BTU, and this is 30,000 BTU, we're more than doubling our heating capacity for inside the shelter. And it's still small and compact, and it's very efficient because it's made by Red Dot. Well, the other thing we're hoping is that the, the fans themselves are um, quieter. And it looks like they are the design that's quieter. They have the uh, more robust um, setup on it. So anyhow, we will uh, get started with that here this morning. Once we get a little daylight. All right, I pulled this <clears throat> diagram up off the internet. <clears throat> it's like um, 
ground wire needs to be attached to the unit. I was kind of wondering about that because if you look on the back here, all you see is wires coming out of the motors. Um, and then it looks like the orange is a high speed wire and red is low speed wire. Hence, this handy switch that I got, found it on Amazon. Uh, I think a company named Hubble makes it. So if you're looking for an identical one, heavy duty. Although it probably doesn't need to be heavy duty because these motors only pull three amps in high mode on 24 volts. So let's go in the shelter. All right, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just take the, the Meridine heater down and disconnect the power from it. And then I need to figure out how to mount the new heater. And then what I'll do is I'll cowboy clamp the hoses off, transfer those over, hook up the power to it, and test it. I may put that switch up here. I may attach it down here to the strut. Um, we'll just have to see how that goes. So let's get started. All right. I got the Meridine unit down. I uh, transferred the wiring over to the 24 volt side here. It's just power and ground going into the heater fan relay. And you see the one spade that's left that will spit out 24 volts when the ever spotter signals the coil to turn on inside that relay. So let's go in the um, garage here and figure out a mounting system for the uh, 24 volt uh, red dot. You guys hear that? That's the sound of the next seven months in Northwest Oregon. Massive amounts of rain. I love it. I think it's awesome. Looks like we're going to mount the heater vertical right here. I'm just taking the struts off and I'm going to try and configure them to these uh, mounting bolts on the side here in some fashion. So we'll get that going. All right. I got the brackets mounted on it. Uh, turns out I'm going to have to cut the hoses just a little bit shorter because I'm going to mount it uh, vertically in this spot right here. Uh, put a spot for the switch, a little bracket for the switch, and I'm going to wire that, um, the motors into the switch right now and get that mounted. And then we just mount the assembly, run a ground to one of these screws on here, and then um, get the plumbing and everything done. Have to add a little bit of water to the system because this is empty. So we'll keep moving forward. All right, I got that switch wired up. I've got a uh, the wires connected to the fans here, and then I've got a pigtail ready to go into the panel. Now it's time to do the surgery. Got some uh, cowboy clamps here to hold the coolant back in the hose, some distilled water, a funnel to fill up the radiator, and then... Uh, Get it mounted on this leg here, and then test everything. All right, I got the connections made for the coolant down there. I had to loosen up the uh, expanding foam in there. I'll have to shoot some more in there when I'm done getting this mounted so that the hoses could relax a little bit. Now comes the fun part, trying to get this up and put some strut straps around the leg here all by myself. So. I'm gonna give that a go. All right. I got the relay made up for the heater fan. It's got 12 volt actuation right here from the upper spotcher, and then 24 volt going through the relay. So 12 volt activates the coil, 24 volt comes through, goes down to this switch right here. I've got it turned on high. There's probably some air in the system 
but I'm going to get it fired up here and I'll come back and show you that it works. Okay, the Eber Spotcher just went into high mode. It's probably trying to circulate coolant through this right now and I don't know if the air pockets are going to affect that or not. I filled it with as much water as I could. Well, let's see what happens here. The relay should turn on any moment for the fans. There we go. So that's high, and that's low. So the Ever Spotcher, if it doesn't sense coolant circulating, it'll turn off. And so that's probably what it just did. So I'll have to get the air out of the system. I'll come back. All right, I bled out the system. She's running full bore right now on the low setting. It's pumping out a good amount of heat. The Eber Spotcher keeps going between high and low on the burner phase. Uh, the fan is definitely a lot quieter than the Maradine, so I like that. Next thing I got to deal with is overnight when we were having our monsoon go through here. I had a leak that came down here all the way down the wall hung out in here for a little bit and went down and under the floor so I had to lift one of these tiles up I actually broke it Willow's not gonna like that but there's a drain under here so the next thing I got to do is take the railroad ties that I have out back here you see them over there by the Forester and uh, drive Abel up onto the railroad ties and get that water drained out from under the floor. I went back uh, inside the access uh, panel behind here outside and I sealed up all the way around uh, the fans inside that box with some Sikaflex. There may have been some gaps or something that I didn't see that I missed so I hit that up. Here we go. Had to put Abel in 50-50 to get him up on the uh, railroad ties. <laughs> and I had to take the parking brake off too. Silly me. Anyhow, um, you can see, I don't know if you can see or not. See all the water down there? So now that we're up at an angle, you can see all the water. So what I'm going to do is... I already opened the drain hole underneath there, but we're going to take the vacuum and run along the edge here. Get all that water out. And then we have this oil filled heater that I plugged in, and we'll just let this sit in here all week. It'll dry everything out. But man, that sucked that I had that, just that tiny little leak starts filling up the shelter pretty quick. So I'm glad I caught it, and I'm glad uh, we had the opportunity to catch it here. So I think that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Uh, I have a couple other things I want to do. I want to remove all the suspension lockdown uh, devices off the truck. And then I got a uh, monitor from my dad, a 10-inch monitor that uh, we'll be installing in a future episode here. I might do it today. I might not. We'll see. I want to go for a run in between the uh, monsoon storms here. But other than that, 
Uh, if you guys like this video, hit like. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I upload uh, at least a video. A, a video at least once every two weeks has been the trend, but lately I've been doing two or three videos each week. So, other than that, I hope you guys are doing well. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.